how to how you do cousins it's old rusty here and we got a really cool video for you today we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff we just bought out an entire antique store we went to get it we got it it was a lot of hard work and we're going to show you some of that stuff today i mean we're talking lots of cool things folks we're talking jewelry we're talking old clocks we're talking just old furniture. I mean, just everything you can think of. Even this puppy right over here. This one right here that's waving at you. You think that's cool? You just wait. You just wait. cousins man i'm excited today I'm, I'm on my way here to pick up peaches uh from the airport here and uh this guy uh is coming back from a symposium an astrophysics uh, symposium uh, of course he's a, a phd and um he was the first person to uh identify i guess that uh the strings uh from string theory, uh, they're just small, uh, strings are just small ropes, and it's kind of a breakthrough situation. He may be up for a, um, a Nobel uh, or something. I would not be surprised, but anyhow, I gotta pick up this, uh, this old guy here because uh, we got work to do. He doesn't know it, but I came across an awesome uh, lot of antiques. I bought out the whole store, and I'm gonna need this guy's help. Um, tomorrow uh we're gonna pick up a u-haul truck pick up the rest of what we got i got some of it last week i was on my own uh but here we're gonna get this guy and uh i cannot wait to show you folks uh what we're into uh, a lot of it's gonna be packaged up as, as we get into it over the coming weeks and months uh it's just exciting folks i don't know what to say it's exciting stuff um i gotta get in here and get this this guy uh help me look for him will you well, bummer town, folks. I had to park. He wasn't ready yet, so I'm gonna have to march myself up here. Maybe he'll need some help, so I can maybe help him load. Here he is. He's coming. Well, well, hey, well, hey. Finally got her cleaned out here, folks. This is round two. We're uh, got all these antiques and things sitting out here, and we're starting to get it all loaded. Um, up in here, probably only about an hour left. We'll get this stuff all loaded and head back out to the storage units. We went from uh, what we had to about four more in the course of a week. All right, Peaches here. We just left the first storage unit, heading on over to the next one. Whew, it has been a long day. Got some good treasures. Can't wait to get these up in the store. If y'all can see that back in the truck bed, more good stuff. some incredible um old very old um clocks here this one not so old of course it's an electric one but this one right here folks just get a look at that hand painted it's gorgeous this is what they call an og clock O-G-E-E. -E. <clears throat> it comes in a, a wooden box and has this particular type of a curve design that comes down and up and over the lip. And then we got this one right here. We got some frosted mirrors. 
beautiful. Um, very beautiful. I believe that this is a, yeah, this is a, I think this is an Ansonia. Is that right? Maybe it's a different, maybe that's the other one that's really um, heavy. But this one right here is by the Seth Thomas Company, you can see. Isn't this incredible right here? I mean, this is a, somewhere between about 1853 and the 1870s, I would say. Um, just a gorgeous uh, piece here. It takes these little weights, actually, that would hang from this right here <clears throat> on either side. And we've got the weights uh, as well. In fact, right here, I'll pull one up for you to see. Very heavy. Very heavy. And we got tape over that, but that would hook right there and it would hang. Really cool piece. It's got this other one down here, you can see. Look at that. It's got the original key with it. And then this one right here, which is really cool. It's uh, shaped like, uh, like an artist's palette. You can see that. And uh, it's got these really cool legs on it. Awesome stuff. Well, hello. This is one of the coolest mannequins, or what you might call a tailor's dummy, that I've ever seen. It has wooden arms, and it has fingers that articulate. The thumb and the index, index finger fully articulate, as you can see, whereas the middle ring and pinky finger are just carved out in a specific shape. But look at that. Isn't that incredible? You can crank that turn it it's like it can hold stuff you can make it uh hold it's kind of kind of it can kind of hold uh cross its arms if you want it to here my goodness isn't that well doggone yes <clears throat> might need to i guess we don't need to grease it up it's it's plenty fine but you got this really cool um fabric here it's just kind of like a spray foam base but you've got this um it's it's a uh, stitch on here a little bit of condition issues but i definitely think we'll be able to sell that really nice guitar came in here mm -hmm. bought this for 45 dollars if you can believe it it was a facebook marketplace find and it is uh, they did not uh advertise what it was but <clears throat> Of course, old Rusty, I've looked enough instruments and I'm familiar with the script. I, I zoomed in really close. I could tell by the uh, the font on the letters that this was a Martin or a Sigma Martin, and I was correct. It's a CR2 model. It's from the 1980s, um, late 1980s. It is a classical guitar, um, as you can tell by the strings themselves. But just look at how beautiful that wood is. This is a solid spruce top and solid rosewood side and back. Just a very attractive instrument, very well made. This is a lower line of instruments that Martin had, um, but still good quality. Um, <clears throat> I had to go through and I pulled off. This is the section here that's called a nut. And this is the section right here that's called the saddle. The strings go over the saddle, they go over the nut. That's what holds them suspended above the sound hole. I had to take off the um, the ones that were on there because they were just really cheap plastic. You can even bend that, snap it if you wanted to. So what I did was I bought um, a replacement nut and saddle out of, uh, it's the Tusk company, but um, it's called Tusk, but it's made out of bone. And I essentially, um, they were just block pieces, and I <clears throat> sanded them down until they were the correct um, shape. And uh, you know, I put them put them in there. Actually, it would have gone would have gone more like this right here. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that it uh, it worked out here, folks. And uh, she sounds all right. So that's you know, <clears throat> hoping to get four four hundred and fifty dollars out of that. Nothing super exciting, but for a forty five dollar um, you know, uh, cost and, you know, about $15 for the two other pieces and a little bit of elbow grease, um, you know, it'll, it'll shape up nicely for us. Well, we've pulled 
this stuff out. Some of this is uh, are a few things I've kind of grabbed at yard sales or thrift stores here recently, um, kind of put put away until we had a large lot. And others of these came from a lot of the, some of the of the jewelry we purchased recently. But everything you're looking at here, folks, is sterling silver. Even these yellow tone ones. Um, it just means that 925 parts out of a thousand is silver. The other 75 parts <clears throat> can be any other metal. And so sometimes they'll put in different colored metals uh, to make different colors or achieve a certain look. And so we have some spoons here. This is a section where we have a variety of necklaces that have different types of pendants, a synthetic ruby. Here's a synthetic sapphire with um, kind of a cubic zirconia halo there. I love the look of the halo look of diamonds or things around a, a central stone. Some crosses. Some um, Here's a nice um, set that's a synthetic opal, cubic zirconia, and synthetic sapphires. And sterling silver, we got an earring and necklace and pendant set there. That's quite nice. Here's one that's uh, gold over, what they call gold over, which is just a thin layer gold over sterling silver. And more necklaces, of course, as you can see here. Sort of a bizarre, crude, handmade um, brooch here. So thin, almost like tin, but it is... It is silver, some uh, some wartime um, medals here for certain achievements and use in certain um, weaponry, but they are sterling silver on the back. You can see it identified right there, sterling. Don't know why I'm whispering, but <clears throat> anyways, we got some earring sets here, some pendants, some rings, a gigantic turquoise there. Some other things. This is, believe it or not, that is uh, sterling silver as well. Some sort of a redstone, a gigantic chunk. It's probably 25 grams. I'm not kidding you. Some diamonds stuck in there. So thick, I wouldn't want to wear it, but somebody will want to. This is a nice napkin ring made of sterling silver. We've got a variety of sterling silver um, thimbles here from various times, but several of these are early 1900s and the 1800s. We've even got a couple that have gold on them, not in this lot, but we uh, did come across some. And then we've got some other, you know, brooches and other various things, bracelets, and then some, um, you know, some charms, things like that, charms and stuff, maybe other pendants, rings. This has got a, looks like a, Tiger eye there, kind of. This is a cool piece. I think I may have shown it on another video, but it hadn't sold. It's still here. This is like dragon's heads on the end of this kind of kind of like a cuff bangle thing here. But all in all, I think this will really be good. <clears throat> We're looking at around 900 to 950 grams worth of sterling silver. If I were to sell that for scrap, we'd be looking around 75% of that dollar value. So somewhere in the 650 to $700 range, uh, most likely, if I, if I was lucky. Um, but selling these things individually, over time you could make more money, but it takes a lot longer. Um, in this particular case, believe it or not, I'm listing this for 99 cents for a seven-day auction. I've, see, I've been doing a lot of research. I've seen a lot of stuff go for decent money above scrap weight. Since all of this is wearable and none of it is junk or for scrap or broken, I expect to get 700 dollars possibly a little bit more for this lot it is a risk to start an auction that low but with uh, metals like silver and gold the demand is high enough that no one's going to let someone sneak in there and buy it for 20 bucks it's just not going to happen i'll have probably 20 or more bids on this from multiple bidders before it's all over we have a handful of more things we got to get into here today um along with some of the jewelry um that uh, that we've already shown and also that I'm going to show you here. I'm trying to find the other side of this pesky little bust, buster here. Where are you at? Oh, I got the pink one. Where's the... Here you are. So these are belts, folks. They're made out of linen and they are Ralph Lauren and they've never been used. Found these at a, at a thrift store for $2 a piece. They sell for about $20 to $25 a piece. And so uh, I was kind of excited about that. <clears throat> we also got into a bunch of 
um, just random sunglasses, folks. None of these are going to be worth a ton. Uh, some, some, it's very much like the ones I sport oftentimes. These, yep, these ones, the yellow uh, lenses, of course. But um, we're going to throw some of these into some small lots of maybe three to five each. Someone will get a deal on some kind of cheaper throwaway glasses, but to have a few in the car from time to time, not too bad. And then under here, folks, is where we have some nicer jewelry and some pieces. We've got a few old uh, um, lighters, as a matter of fact. Here's a here's a Loris brand um, Mickey Mouse uh, watch. And then some other things bagged up. I'm going to pull some of these out here in a bit and uh, kind of show you exactly what we're going to be working with here today. What I love, folks, is finding interest in old postcards and old photographs. <clears throat> I bought this for $5 at uh, an antique store last week. And you might be thinking, that's a lot to pay for one single photograph. And you're not wrong. I oftentimes will not spend that kind of money on something. But guys, this was tugging at my heartstrings a little bit. You already saw... I me mean, showing you a guitar, old Rusty's play guitar and some other instruments for quite a while. Just as a hobby, I'm not excellent by any stretch, but I do have a good time with it. And when I see things like this with old instruments in them, oh my goodness, folks, it's so cool. I'm going to show you this <clears throat> puppy. So I'll have multiple loops around most of the time um, and, uh, and also other things to help see. So I'm going to just bring you into my world a little bit here. And we're going to step in and take a deeper look at this. Now, what what do you think about that? I'm trying to get a good... There you go. You can see the very top, the headstock is slotted. Okay? You go down, we see three separate dots on the neck. Okay? One, two, three. This is clearly a slimmer body, almost like a parlor-sized guitar. Um... And you also notice no pick guard. It's quite weathered. That could mean that it is a darker wood, like koa or mahogany. But um, it also could just be weathered, right? And then that uh, bridge at the bottom, you'll notice it has um, a central area where the strings attach. And also two areas on either end that look like they're separated, but they're not actually separated. It's the same piece of wood, but those are almost like triangular pieces of the bridge on the either side. It's just an aesthetic piece. Now look at this. If we pull away, get a good look again. <clears throat> I believe that the guitar that they have is something like this. Maybe not this exact guitar, but very, very similar. You got the slotted headstock. You got the three dots in the center. You got... Uh, this, I don't think that the guitar we were looking at had much of a rosette, which is the, the lines around this, the sound hole, but it might. This also looks like it has been um, actually modified. This particular one I'm looking at, and you want to see why I didn't notice this at first, but you see this? This would have had uh, more of a floating bridge originally, and floating bridge meaning there was what they call a metal tailpiece, and you can see the outline as it weathered, would have been connected underneath of the the um, the lower bout here where the strap would, the strap peg is. A metal piece would have come up here. The strings would have gone over a littler piece of bridge, almost like a violin, and they call it floating because it's not actually glued down or attached. It just floats, quote unquote, floats, sits underneath of the strings, and then would have been attached here. Someone has converted this particular guitar to um, one that um, has a, a fixed bridge, okay? And there are several advantages to having that, but if I zoom in here, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Do you see this like almost like a, um, uh, what am I trying to think of? A pyramid type of a thing. If you were if you were above it, like 30,000 feet looking down, it's like a triangular piece that comes up on either side. <clears throat> that is exactly what the one in my picture here looks like. So this uh, particular model, uh, let's go back. This particular model, let me black out here, is actually a, um, it's a 1910 021. I believe that the guitar we're looking at is likely a Martin or something like an older Washburn or potentially a, a more boutique type item, but they're wanting nearly $7,500 for this. 
But back here in the tens and the teens, which is, I believe, when this was taken, possibly as late as 1920s, but I believe that that guitar is a, around the turn of the century, maybe a, a teens, a guitar like this, if in good condition today, would likely be worth in the six to $10,000 range, especially if it's a Martin or one of those boutique guitars. Super cool to see this. I'm going to hold on to this for a little while, but for other guitar nerds, people who are, you know, geek out on that kind of thing, or maybe they have this exact model. Would love to have a, a, a picture like this, and I think that it would have quite a bit of value if I wanted to sell it. That is completely aside from the fact that we have quite an interesting family situation going on here. Man in the back with a cigar, we got kiddos galore, and a cool little old puppy dog with its arm up. Um, cool little photo. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing that as much as I did finding it. One of the things we came through here was this Stetson hats box. When you open it up, lo and behold, we have an original Stetson hat. And here's what's cool about it. Aside from the fact that it has the original box, there's a little bit of dirt, but I think that that can be cleaned pretty well, even by us. But look at this. Uh, we got this feather in the cap here, got this interesting edge design. Look at that, all the way around. On the inside, you've got the Stetson, Stetson man there, I suppose. Got that, tells you the size, seven and three eighths. The original deal, and look at that. Well, wait a second, what is this? What is this? Why, well, folks, it's none other than the original sales sheet. It was sold in Hickory, North Carolina. Doggone it, had to scratch my face here, dropping this pesky bugger. On, in 1982, folks, 1982. $77 in 1982, the Sonora Mojave Stetson hat. $80 after tax, no cash refunds. Look at that, that's cool, folks. So. Uh, this is sort of the lesson here is when you buy things, when they come in original packaging or even uh, just other boxes, make sure to significantly inspect the inside of the package. Because believe it or not, items that come with original packaging in their original boxes and or with the original price tags or receipts oftentimes carry more value than if those items were missing just because it's not as common it's more rare to find the item in its original packaged condition and state all right over here in one of the garages and finally folks i got her out the cab king and we've also got a high tech saw you know what this is for, folks? This is for all of our mineral, rock and mineral specimens. Geodes, thunder eggs, uh, all of the different corundum specimens that we find out here in West North Carolina. I can take this, I can cut these, and this is awesome. This is the awesome part here. I've got this section where I can put the stone in here, I can adjust this to pinch it, and then instead of having to put my hands on it, which is a little bit dangerous, I can simply slide this along the pole and cut it down the middle and make sure I get a straight cut. I can do that time and time again. It's wonderful. So I can get my, let's say I find uh, some corundum, uh, some pink or red ruby in, in a chunk, and I want to cut off some of the rough edges. I can do that here. I take that exact piece and I move it over here to the Cab King. Now I have not set up all the wheels yet. Okay, you can see we got three here, and I got sections here for, I believe, three more on top of this. Now, I believe a lot of that is down in here, but um, get these set up. We'll turn this on. We've got a light right here that's adjustable. I can move it over. I can be operating any of these individually. You can pull up this plate. This section will be filled with some water, and we will have some of these tubes right here. You can see feeding water into it, dripping in, dripping on these to keep them wet and moist. You can always dip it in, but this is what will, uh, these are abrasive pads, almost like um, sanding pads, and you basically sand from tough grit to, 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 to uh, smaller grit, uh, thicker or harder, more coarse to, to, to more fine, and you can polish these things up simply to look at them better as specimens or if, if you want to make, say, a cabicon, which is like a flat 
uh, edge on the bottom and then a convex bowl shape on the outside to put into say pendants or rings or things we can make all of that right here in the garage now and so i'm going to try to get all this stuff up and working and this is my uh this is my hope is that the next time peaches and i or someone else get out and do a little bit of um you know rock hounding out here in the hills uh we can bring something back and in the same video of showing you where we found it we can actually come in here cut something and polish it up a little bit and show you what it looks like oh my goodness this is the most gorgeous day folks it's late late february and it's 74 today it's supposed to be 77 tomorrow can you believe that junk um, well, we're up here at the top of the hill comes up to the warehouse. I just wanted to show you one of the th items that came with our um, a Big lot was this folks. It's a big old cactus. This is like an heirloom native uh, North Carolina cactus. There are not a lot of these you don't see them a lot That um, was in this wrought iron uh, Bowl basically when we got it but that thing, people have been putting cigarettes out in it, and it was completely waterlogged. I mean, the water was saturating. It was just sitting because there was no holes in it. So first thing we needed to do was pull it out, let all the water leak out. It's still wet and moist. We're going to give it a couple more days. You can see there was a little bit of damage before we even got it, but we're going to see if we can try to take this and make another plant out of it. But essentially, we'll let it dry out a little bit. We'll try to um, hoist her up, kind of get some of this dirt clogs and stuff like that uh, off of the roots. And then we're going to dig a hole in a place where it would be better suited to live in the ground. We're going to get a lot of heavy grit. We're going to get something that's more um, suitable for a plant like this, what they like. But I cannot tell you, folks, I'm so happy. And you know what? Uh, Flo is just going to be ecstatic. I mean, I'm, I'm winning some major brownie points with her. Let me just tell you. But I don't, you know, you guys may not get excited about cactuses. I get it. But... You may or may not realize that plants, uh, organic items, can sometimes be really good things to resell. In fact, uh, Flo a lot of times raises things from seed during the winter, and she usually has more than she needs. That stuff can be sold, folks. You're just, you're just, uh, there are lots of people who like to plant and do that kind of thing. So uh, keep that in mind next time. Uh, you know, you're out and about thinking of ways to make a buck or two. Maybe plant something, put some stuff in the ground. It helps the earth and you'll be helping somebody else out too. Well, look at what I got to work with today. <clears throat> A variety of things. This is all jewelry, all costume jewelry. We're going to talk about some of this stuff here um, and I'll kind of show you what I've done uh, to kind of sort this and where I'm, I'm working with. So I have these bagged up in miniature lots. Sometimes these are individual and sometimes these are in lots themselves. And why do I do it the way I do it? Well, based on what I'm seeing online, also my own experience with, with selling things, um, there is no one right way to do this. I want you to know that, first of all. When I tell you something, give you advice, it, you're welcome to take it or leave it. Um, this is a little walrus. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that uh, the way I'm doing it is the best way, perfect way, the only way. In fact, we employ multiple strategies. We change them up every week. It has a lot more to do with what we need at the time and less to do with the items themselves, whether we do auctions or buy it nows. These are some little uh, stick pins here. Not terribly old, but nice. Um, I have a lot here of uh, vintage uh, cufflinks and these are what they would call gold filled so just a tiny amount of gold on the outside of it uh, a base alloy underneath for for strength and then various little brooches like here's a little brooch that someone has put together and it's made of organic material like pressed flowers inside glass with a metal exterior kind of like they would do stained glass in a way Here's another little brooch, just like a little lion's head. And it is a brand, and I don't know the exact brand there. I'll have to look closer at it to see Janus Ocean or something like that, maybe. You can tell me, folks, if you're familiar with that. I'll, I'll figure it out. <clears throat> but here's one. I'm going to sell these ones that are individual. I'm selling individually because they're unique. This is a little... Um, 
it says 22 it's it's a bunch of different figures this is what they would call a charm bracelet of course they're not hanging they're dangling they're actually just wrapped around this piece of leather i think it's a little bit older i need to do a little research on it i put these necklaces together because they are or this is actually one necklace excuse me this is one necklace i just thought it was interesting it has kind of frosted glass various um some organic material like um pieces of shell i thought somebody might like the colors on that same as this this is a really cool um i don't know what they if they call this millefiore or what they call this type of glass it's like italian i believe uh glass it's a swirl it's made to look like flowers and things a lot of really pretty beads here and so um i think that's a gorgeous little necklace it's got a really cool clasp up here at the top as well um, someone's definitely going to like that moving on folks we're looking at this right here this is a, a genuine coral necklace this is what they would call like coral stems as small they're red um really a, a pretty little necklace speaking of other material that was made by the earth this is amber <clears throat> actual nuggets of amber strung into little misshapen oddly shaped beads all through it uh, really cool stuff. Amber will actually float in uh, in salt water. So if you ever want to test that, you can throw that in there. Genuine amber. This one is a nice little bracelet that has a lapis. It's a blue mineral stone there. Very pretty. The back of it is just flat metal pieces. And then here's a nice little kind of a band that has been uh, handmade, hand beaded. Isn't that beautiful? Someone will really like that. I don't know who wears this kind of thing, but they, maybe they just have it out as a display or something in a case. Very pretty beads. A lot of work went into making that. And so individual items like this that are unique, I'm going to sell them by themselves because I think that they stand on their own. If you look at our last video where we talk about crack, which is one of my favorite things to uh, use and talk about, you'll know that that acronym has served us well. And, uh, you know, uh, rarity uh or uniqueness kind of does it stand on its own or is it is it super common um you know this is something that there are probably a handful out there i think this is probably made as like an export piece or like a traveling um like you come to the area and you buy this as like a little trinket type thing um to uh, to take back with you from your travels i believe that it was made overseas but it's made of a metal i don't think it's made out of silver but it's an interesting piece you're not going to find something like that all that often and so i'm going to sell it individually right same thing with this little brooch. Um, it's made to look like, I suppose, uh, someone from an Asian country. I'm just basing that off the hat and this little thing that they're holding. But it's like, little, this, this is made of metal. It's been hand painted. And then you have this little piece here that's dangling that they're holding onto. It's made out of Bakelite. Bakelite is a really old plastic. And you can use something called semi-chrome polish to, uh, to test it. You just rub that polish on. It's like a pinkish, soft pink color. If it turns yellow or orange, it's Bakelite. If it turns a darker red color or black or muddy or nothing at all then uh, what you have is something else probably still plastic but maybe not bakelite and the only reason we test for that is that there are collectors for bakelite who will pay gobs of money for stuff that is made out of bakelite here we have a variety of brooches and earrings and i'm just throwing this little lot together because it's a few unique pieces and uh, i think um you know it'll draw someone's attention then then we come over here what i've done is i've taken basically a brooch okay with copper made out of copper entirely a brooch with like little flowers and it has a matching a uh, little bracelet that goes with it there and um so these came in separate lots but they matched really well and so that's why it says renoir but that's not uh that's not what these are um well i see that what does that say? There is a brand there. It is Renoir. R-E-N-O-I-R. Renoir. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not super familiar with that brand, but I'm going to look it up. Uh, this is a really cool brooch, right? Or a uh, uh, necklace, rather. Um, it's clear glass. It's purple. And it has this little figure of like a, like a Cupid figure here um, with a bow and arrow. And it's got kind of dangly pieces at the bottom. And it has a brand name on it as well. Uh, Goldette. 
maybe something like that i'll look at it um it's always important to turn these pieces over folks look and see if you can find brand names this one's got a brand name on it or something it says what does that puppy say gold crown gold crown i don't know but it's like this is a cool piece because it's some sort of the resin that's been carved and it's green it's like floral you know and it's sort of like the make of it is pretty interesting um here's an example now people people uh, get upset with me and they leave me comments on here about how i'm misleading people when i tell people that uh the backs of pieces of jewelry when they have texture are cheap now folks <laughs> you have to understand that the advice i'm giving is general advice and everything i'm going to talk about will have exceptions Okay, but I'm telling you from handling thousands upon thousands of pieces of jewelry, both high end fine jewelry and low end cheap, the cheapest costume jewelry that you can make, that when you have a piece of, of jewelry and it has this sort of like rough um, textured area in the back, nine times out of ten, folks, nine times out of ten, it's cheaper jewelry. Now, if you look it over, and you see the texture, don't immediately discard it, right? That's the mistake. And so you're, you know, you're doing all the different steps to try to determine the value of something. You need to turn it over. That's the first step. See what you see. Look, see if there's gemstones. Is it, is there any light coming through the back of it? Now, again, if there's, if they're glued in place, it doesn't mean it's the cheapest piece of jewelry, but it is an indication that it's likely not fine jewelry. I don't know of a single piece of jewelry that I've ever seen where they glued in diamonds or emeralds or rubies or didn't allow lights to pass through them, okay? But something like this, if you see a manufacturer name, then that's, it's like the texture is sort of like a, okay, it's a step back. And then you see the name of the manufacturer. Okay, well, step back forwards a little bit. Uh, you have to go through several phases to figure out what's uh, valuable. I just, I, I, I encourage you, I don't want you to do it because I don't want you to lose money, but if you were to buy just a random five pound or 10 pound costume jewelry lot on eBay and you got it out, look at the back of the, those pieces. Almost all of them are going to be, uh, have some sort of a, a, a kind of a cruddy uniform texture on the back of it and they're cheap. Okay. It doesn't mean all of them are like that, but, um, if you watch our other videos, we give you more in-depth uh, discussions on, on the types of things to look at. And again, there are exceptions. We're talking about the general rules. This is a cool little brooch here because it's um, black, it's carved, it's got some gold leaf painted on it, and then you have a faux uh, or a synthetic looking piece of plastic that's made to look like amber. Um, I don't believe that this is actually amber. And in order to fully test it, I would have to detach it. So I'd have to pry the edges off. I'd have to pop it out of the glue. To me, it's not worth it, honestly. So I will list this as likely faux, likely synthetic, but possibly genuine. But I'll just say that I didn't want to damage the piece by trying to test it. Right. And if you guys know of other ways of testing for amber other than the float test, please let me know and I may begin to employ that. This is also a wonderful little um, piece here. Uh, two pieces, actually, two brooches. It's kind of like almost like a silver filigree. I don't think that it's actually made of silver, although it might have some silver content in it. Bolos, bolo ties. And this has got a piece of dark agate in it cabicon there really cool not made of silver it's just a base metal but it's etched it's got a, an attractive look to it as far as the, the the darker color goes with the black leather the braided leather you've got this etched part um, floral with some just some different um, designs and then also the little bottom uh, pieces of metal here that hold the leather together without fraying uh, are also pretty nice it doesn't look like it's hardly ever been used this is not a, a real high-end piece, but I expect I could sell this for $20 to $25, probably no problem. Look at this. This is something that I'm talking about that's unique. It's cats. It's cats and it's unique. When you have things that are made uh, where the animals are the, the central figure, animals, cats, dogs, people love them, right? And then you have something that's a little bit bizarre, a little bit flashy, those things can, the unique things can also sell well. We got a set here of earrings and this kind of like a silver-ish color. It's not made of silver, but and then this brass piece here, which is clearly a cat, a little kitty cat. And then you got this uh, necklace here with these beads, black and white. This is probably made out of bone, bovine. 
uh, bone or or maybe uh, cattle bone uh, dyed and an etch to make that design and some just kind of cheap uh, metal beads. I don't know what I'll get for that, but I'm going to sell that by itself because uh, someone who wants to buy this is not necessarily the same person that'll buy that. Um, and I would make less money if I put them together this way. Uh, it might take a little bit longer, but I'll find that right person. So like I said, we've got a variety of cool things here. Here's some just some loose stuff that I'm trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with it. I'll probably put the little bells and the thimble together because they are, they're made out of porcelain, right? That makes sense. Then I, I've got a few different, like, say, charms. I'm going to take, say, the charms. Okay, even though they're different types, I could sell them individually, of course, but uh, if I want to move it fast and someone likes charms, I could put these charms together, like little little shoes, little basketball, maybe a sports-related one, let's say, right? I could even go further. Let's do running shoes, a basketball, and a football. The football's together. That's a, a sports charms lot. And then we got animal charms. We've got elephants and stuff. This might go by itself. This is a little hedgehog. Look at that. It's kind of made out of, um, we got a brand here? Wade, England. Cool. We'll look that up. This is made out of uh, some sort of ceramic, and then it's been hand glazed. It's been glazed. I say hand glazed. Probably they painted it on with a paintbrush, and then they fired it. But uh, that's cool. And then, you know, some pendants. We'll put the pendants together, and little bracelets and stuff. And then I got a handful of some of this costume jewelry here, like, like necklaces, bracelets, and such that are not branded. But they are not terribly ugly. They're still decent quality, all right? It does occur to me to say to you that if you're going to get into this very seriously, full-time, or just specifically focus on jewelry, that it would be a good idea to get a book or two where it can tell you, you can learn more. It's always good to learn. YouTube videos obviously are, are great, but uh, it's not the end all. I certainly don't have all the answers, and you know what? I'm still learning myself. So if you guys catch me saying something that's either blatantly not true or or uh, you need to uh, to correct me on something or give me some information. I don't take offense to that, folks, as long as you do it in a kind way, because I want to learn as well. Um, this little ring here is like a little, it's just like a little charm bracelet, and it is for, I believe, like a sorority or a high school or something, 1963 SHS. I wonder if that's some sort of high school. What do you think? Possibly so, and uh, and I got three of them here, so I'll probably put this up as a listing. One listing, I'll put quantity three. That way, I've got three items up in the store now, but I only had to do one listing. That's awesome. If you get things that are highly sought after, make good money, and you can get a bunch of the same one, oh, goodness gracious, it's about the best situation. Because you just, let's say you have a 100 or something. You put up, you do one listing, a really good listing, and you put quantity 100, and you walk away. 10, 12 can sell, but then eBay's just going to show the remaining amount that's left. You have to do, you don't have to do anything else about with it. It's pretty awesome. Oh my goodness. Well, I probably should stop here and jump into this. I need to do a little research. I'm going to start with this little pen. And last little red uh, piece of glass there, I believe, for this eye. It's a really nice design. Um, but there's a tiny little spot right here by my nail. And I don't know what that says, if that's a maker mark or what. I'm going to check into that. Get her all listed. Here's another one. I'll, I'll show you this. Just looks like a beautiful little kind of gold color. Look at the back. It seems flat. Well, don't be uh, running off too fast because right at my nail there, right on the actual pen itself, has tiny script very tiny script and it says sterling so this is a sterling silver pen so you wouldn't want to throw this in with just a, a random costume lot because it's worth more than that simply because of the metal it's also got a nice look i may even google lens this and see if i can find the exact one for sale someplace whoa you're still here cousin man you must be a first cousin we're closer aren't we thanks for sticking around folks if you haven't looked at it or didn't know, the Slick Web Media family, which we are a part of, has a variety of YouTube channels. Postcard Planet, High Spirits, um, we've got uh, Sound Machine, and we're getting another one coming up in the next month or so called What's Sold. You might be interested in that. It's going to be about what's sold. <laughs>
with the different resellers we've got around here, things that sold locally and online. We'll talk about what, where we got it, what we paid for it, where we sold it, what we sold it for, and uh, some more strategies. So another educational video for those part-time and or full-time resellers out there. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. We'll be back again soon. We got so much stuff to go through. Um, we're going to have videos, gobs of videos and content for those for a long time coming up. So take care, folks. Good luck on your scouting and finding. I hope you make a buck or two. Take care. A one and a two and a three. Rusty the reseller, he'll sell you the shirt off his back. <laughs> well, I have done it. Rusty, Rusty.